Hi guys, Flader here. Today I'm here with a little bit of an update on what's going on with the botting stuff with World of Warcraft. And the last video, if you haven't watched it, talked a little bit about behavior trees at the end. In fact, I've written a behavior tree library called GladNet, or not GladNet, called GladBehavior.tree. And it's available on NuGet, and it's open source on GitHub. There's a few other implementations out there, but they didn't suit my needs. And so I wrote my own. And it surprisingly didn't take much time. Now, today I've actually got a working behavior tree. I've never written an AI with behavior tree before. This is my first time, so I think I could improve, definitely. But I want to show you guys a simple PvP Frost DK profile that's built with the behavior tree. And it's unfinished, but the cool, some of the cooldown usage is done, the targeting and movement branches are done, the damage is done as well. Yeah, so pretty much, pretty much, uh, it doesn't take into account immunities just yet, and it can't really make decisions like, what should we do when somebody gets bopped, or if someone cloaks or evasions. But those are some things that can be solved quite easily without, without introducing significant complexity to your code. And I'm going to go and show you right now what it does right now. It currently does different things depending on how many targets are nearby. So we'll, we'll see it do a simple, like an a, like a AoE rotation here in a second. So we'll go ahead and... I've already got the bot running. Go ahead and run. And we'll attack this dummy and see what happens. And just as a heads up, uh, this is un ungemmed, unenchanted... Relentless gear, or the Shadow Morn, just because it's fun. Um, without a, without even a relic, trinkets and stuff, and some green boots. Like so, this you're not going to see amazing numbers, especially in this random spec I put together. Plus, I'm, I don't know much about DKs, but I think you'll see that it plays okay. There's there's some weaknesses where the diseases sometimes drop off. Because there's no cur currently there's no there's no dealing with uh, should we hold off on casting maybe a, oh, an obliterate or a hungering or howling blast if our diseases might drop so that's something that can be improved and you'll see uh, it's it's burst it's burst damage is uh, not very high I'm not sure how high it's supposed to be to be honest you'll see that its average DPS is only 3.3k that's probably low. But again, I, I might attribute that to the missing gems, enchants, items, relic, and bad spec. You see, um, the AoE burst got up to about 10k there, which is, you know, it suits my needs, personally, as a multiboxer. But let's go ahead and get into how this is all done. Now, I don't have a great API for constructing the actual behavior tree, so it kind of looks like a mess. I don't have a visual editor for it either. But if we go down to this part where this is called when we're in combat uh, it's it's pretty simple we just evaluate the behavior tree every frame and provide some context which is the combat context as well as some death knight specific stuff for example the runes and the construction of the tree is actually up here some of these lines are quite lengthy and will eventually I'll move them into their own nodes as you see down here we have named nodes. For example, we have a killing machine branch that checks and sees if we've got the killing machine buff, and then if we do, it also checks to see if we've got the rhyme buff, which is for a free uh, reset cooldown howling blast, and if we do, it tries to consume that. Otherwise, it's going to go in and check to see if we're in range for a frost strike, and if we've got the runic power for it. And then we also have another node which I start to, which you can tell pretty much from from this right here. What it does is it tries to start dumping runic power if we get over 99. And uh, this this is assuming you have 130 runic power. And this is something that can be brought into the settings layer, so you can configure that. Here's one that deals with the application of frost fever. It checks to see if the target has frost fever. It checks to see our range. Checks to see if we've got a frost ring available. 
and then also casts conditionally a spell, might cast Chains of Ice, might cast Icy Touch, depends on the settings. And then uh, more, the, one of the more complex nodes, I think, is what we do with Frost and Unholy. Because first, uh, the rune check is the more the more complicated of all the other rune checks because there's a lot of combinations we're interested in. A Frost and Unholy. We've got a sequence here. Uh, Frost and Unholy. It basically, if any of these are true, like for example, if this is true, or if we have two deaths, or if we have a Frost and Unholy and one death, it'll actually do it. I don't know if that's how what it should be, but that's what it does. And then. The actual sequence is defined up here, and again, the API for constructing this, it's not very pretty. There's a lot of static stuff, but we basically check and see if we've got runes to deal, to like spend, because you always want to keep spending these runes, from what I understand. And so first we check and see if we should Howling Blast. So if there's a lot of targets around, you always, almost always want to Howling Blast. I can't think of any reason why you wouldn't want to. I just did. That just the AoE pressure is significant, it, even if the target's in execute range, I think. And so we come down here, we've got a sequence that checks to see, are we in range? Uh, is Howling Blast on cooldown? Then we've got an interesting one here that checks to see, within a certain radius, for example 12, uh, are there a bunch of enemies around the current target? And if there is, we cast Howling Blast! And we've got a clothy branch, so... Clothies are most susceptible to obliterate when you don't have lots of armor penetration. And so we only obliterate clothy targets. You have a similar check. I've got a node that checks to see the armor class type of a target. And if it's not clothy, then really it comes down to choosing between Howling Blast if it's up and obliterate if it's not. I don't know if that's correct, but that's what I'm currently doing. And so. Essentially, the whole the whole tree is built on, or at least the combat part is built on stuff like that. Uh, we don't do any of that stuff unless we have Frost Fever and Blood Plague debuff on them. And some of those nodes you saw earlier is what dealt, dealt with those. But the later ones are more interesting. And then at the very end, we have the wonderful Horn of Winter. If we've got nothing else to do, we should always Horn of Winter. Get that... Get that buff back up there, get that 10 runic power. Uh, in real, If you were really playing, you might not want to use Horn of Winter, because you put down global cooldown. Like, uh, half a global cooldown later, you might want to white mock to have been doing something. So, those are some decisions that a bot could make with some more work. And we also have, which I didn't show, we also have, well, actually, Path. So if I stop clicking on this target, and then I click on it, it'll actually path. And if you try to, you can't turn away from the target. Nothing will get you to turn away from the target, no matter how hard you try. And so that's done with our movement branch, which basically checks our distance, tries to move to the target. And once we're there, it will try to face the target, which you can see here. And uh, I'm looking into potentials for target switching immediately, like during Ice Block or Bop, I think target switching automation is going to be critical for competitiveness. You don't want any downtime against the Ice Block, because that's what makes those sorts of cooldowns most useful, is relieving the average pressure you're putting out on a, on a team or against a group of people in a battleground. And it's not so much only to protect the target that it's on, it really helps the other team or players catch up in a battleground with healing. And so you don't want to be caught off guard, you don't want to give them the value of the ice block. So you want immediate swaps. And as assuming they were in range of the other target, they're going to have diseases up, so the switch is going to be like that. And so that's going to be interesting. But like I said, there's I got to deal with a lot of immunity stuff. There's a lot of there's a lot of special cases in PvP where you have to worry about immunities, and so I'm gonna have to go through, and we'll have to create separate branches for what to do when things are uh, cloak of shadow, evasion, maybe even shield wall, bops, divine shield, stuff like that. 
Also, interrupt and CC breaking needs to be done. You want to be able to you want to be able to lichborn when someone's casting a fear on you, or maybe when a priest comes close enough to you. That's always scary if you're multiboxing as a non-shaman. And interrupts as well. You might want to throw out some. You might want to throw out some. Uh, what you call it? Some some a uh, that range interrupt. I forget the name of it. It's the one that's got the long range, not mind freeze. You always want to do the mind freeze. So I'm going to be looking in on that because you want to take advantage. You really need to get as much value from your spells in the current environment because everybody's cheating. I know people don't want to hear that, but everyone's scripting at the high level. And these BGs you're playing against these people, a lot of them are not good. They're cheating. And, well, you have to compete against that. So you have to get the most value. Especially if you don't have the best gear. And so, yeah, that's what that's what I've been doing. Uh, the API for the bot itself hasn't changed much. We're still based on another bot, mostly. I haven't had a chance to move away from that. I've just been experimenting and getting a feel for what I can do with this behavior tree library I've written. And it seems that we're able to create lots of reusable generic nodes, which you can see here. You've got lots of, is tar are we in range of the target? Is something off cooldown? Are we below a certain health threshold? And those are sorts of nodes that you can pose together, create branches of behaviors and AI that I think will be useful throughout all other profiles. So a lot of groundwork's been done a lot of groundwork's been laid to create profiles for other classes, other specs, in PvE as well. So yeah, that's all. I hope it was slightly interesting. I don't really know how good this bot is compared to... a rotation bot is compared to others that might exist. There's a fundamental lack of information that I want to be accessible. For example, I'd like combat log information so I can make determinations whether or not I should AMS or ice mount. Right now, I'm just judging those by health percentages. And, and, real, and if you were to really be playing, you don't really want to AMS against a warrior. Uh, I mean, you might, but it's not. it would not exactly hurt. It'll definitely reduce your pressure since there's a, there's a runic power cost, I believe. And so that's not good. So I'd like to look into that. And I'd also like to better create a better API for querying current casting spells around you in targets so you can make some determinations. You, get, uh, you might be able to even throw in some good grips there if you really need to interrupt a spell and can't reach them and don't have the runes. And eventually I'd like to coordinate between other bots. So if you're running multiple bots at once, for example, multi-boxing, I think a, a leader, I think a leader should be able to publish goals, like publish a goal, like I'd like to, I'd like for this person to be gripped, and then someone can claim that task uh, if they have grip off cooldown or they have the global cooldown ready or or whatever. That's still a goal. Lots, of, there's a lot of goals here long term. Uh, some of the biggest are getting away from being based on another bot, because that's right, right now what we're on. Even though we've made some gains there, as you can see, this doesn't look like any existing bot, but definitely. And surprisingly, I've got Honor Buddy up here. This video is probably already long enough, I shouldn't go into this, but Honor Buddy is also written in .NET C Sharp, so you can see a lot of the stuff they do. And I don't know if it's if it's just by by nature of being in the same domain and serving the same purpose, but there's there's a lot of overlap in the design and API between Honor Buddy and uh, W Robot. So that's interesting. I don't know if we all or they all share a common ancestor of a bot. I they do share some common libraries. They all use fast. They all use fast assembly DLL managed. They all use some form of recast detour, whatever that li library is called. Uh, they all use some sort of math library, whether or not they wrote it themselves. Or this one uses an XNA math library. Really, any one will really work. But honestly, I think 
you should look for system numerics libraries for long term long term um, you want to have a library that can take advantage of multiple instructions I believe it's the word the term is sim and so relying on some other math library like like from X and a probably not great Black blue magic, I assume, is similar to there's a uh, something called gray magic or black magic in .NET. There's a library. I think it was written in the actual botting space to do um, it basically intero interoperability between .NET and unmanaged or memory. That looks like on a buddy sort of integrated it statically so yeah there's a there's an interesting there's an interesting overlap and like I said I'm not sure if it's just the nature of the domain and since everyone's sharing the same goals but there's honestly the API is very similar I would be surprised I'd be surprised they didn't share some ancestor but yeah that's that's it for today uh, hopefully you guys found this video interesting and I'll try to make some more in the future I really don't know yet what's gonna become of this project don't know if it'll ever be released I don't know if it'll be finished I know that I'll personally use it internally for some stuff that I'm going to do I don't know if it ever will get released and if it does, I don't know if it'll be free or not. Uh, if I can't, if I identify that this brings value in a place that other bots don't, I'll probably charge something for it. If I find that it doesn't really achieve anything that others can't already do, I'll just release it for free. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. There's a lot of considerations there because I don't want to hurt the private server community. But. I don't know. I don't really know. That's a, that's a question I have to explore personally. But thanks for watching, guys. Sorry that this was a long video. It was supposed to be short. And if you really watched this far, uh, hopefully it was interesting. Like I said, I'll see you guys in the next video.